Hello and welcome to E4M Live from Khan. I have with me today Sinduja Rai. She's the CEO at Wave Maker for the APAC region. As all of you must be knowing that Sinduja Rai was with Mondelez in India before she transferred to Singapore and now she leads the agency side of the business for Wave Maker in the APAC region. Sinduja, welcome to E4M. Thank you for having me, Sinduja. Thank you very much. Sinduja, you've spent decades at Mondelez before and then uh, you've moved now to the uh, from from the client side of the business to the agency side of the yes. table, to the agency side. It's literally you're on the other side of the table. So how has the transition been for you? So I don't know whether you're aware, but uh, I started my career more than 25 years back in India and I started in the agency world. Okay. So first 13 years of my career, I was working on uh, agency side of the business and I moved to Mondelez and Cadbury's in 2010. And I was there for around 13 years. So I've had like an equally distributed career between the agency world as well as the client world. And uh, it has been uh, a delight to come back to the agency side of the business after having spent more than a decade in uh, Mondelez. You know, uh, in Mondelez, uh, what it helped me do my entire stint there is actually to get into the depth of a uh, corporate organization, how does the business operate, how does the whole system works, what are the different parts of the business between supply chain, sales, finance, procurement, you know, you don't deal with all of these functions when you are in the advertising side of the business because right. you're primarily dealing with marketing. But uh, once you get into a corporate organization, you really understand how that business operates. Uh, you get into the nitty gritties of things and you realize how different functions come together to create the uh, the business value and drive growth for the business. So it was a great learning experience for me. And now all of that that I learned uh, while I was there with Mondelez, I'm able to come back and apply across a breadth of client uh, and categories uh, in the region. So for me, everything that I built there as learnings is something which I'm able to now leverage. Uh, and I think uh, for 13 years, I lived chocolates and biscuits. <laughs> Uh, snacking was my life and uh, it is also really really interesting and uh, quite a great learning experience to come and work across a diverse set of clients and portfolios. So you know you've obviously like you mentioned you've got a lot of learnings from Mondelez that you've applied now but anything which you had to you know unlearn and then come uh, um, unlearn you know now that you're in the agency side of the business? Yeah, I think uh, when you're uh, in the client side of the business, uh, you're so focused on uh, the details of the business mm -hmm. and you're fully rooted into it and fully immersed into it, uh, which requires a huge level of uh, concentration and going deep. And now that I'm out, I'm actually having to ensure that I'm able to work across clients and categories and markets uh, and have a certain balance in the way I go into the depth because I'm also running the entire region. So I can't go into too much of detail in every market for every client in every category. So how do you balance that where you're able to create value for the client in that market and for your team in that market without uh, getting sucked in too much? Because my tendency is to get sucked in too much and just you know be uh, fully engaged. So balancing that out is something which I am trying to learn and do better at. Uh, Wavemaker is one of the standout agencies in the entire group M and WPP uh, group. So how would you assess the year gone by for Wavemaker in the APAC regions in terms of growth or client additions? I think uh, 2023 overall was a great year for Wavemaker in APAC in India, in APAC and globally as well. So we, we were the most uh, awarded business in terms of new business uh, uh, you know growth for us globally and uh, the same was true for APAC as well so I think that is something uh, that kind of momentum when you have in the business when you know you're winning new businesses new clients uh, you have the confidence of the clients that you're engaging with it drives a very strong and positive sentiment and energy in the in the teams right so I'm very lucky that I have joined an organization which is uh, in a growth cycle right now. And uh, the overall energy and the vibe in the business is extremely, extremely rewarding. Now, I just want you to remove the agency hat and put on your client hat for the moment. What does a client expect from an agency? And also now from the media side, 
how are you geared up to drive meaningful growth i think uh, more and more what uh, i'm hearing from clients as i travel across the region and i'm meeting with all our key clients in the region um two things two very crucial things one how can we simplify the complex ecosystem which is now what the current marketplace has become for them right uh how do we simplify and integrate the whole piece for them and as wpp i think we are more than equipped to be able to do that so when i walk into a, a client uh, meeting room or a board room i'm not just the wave maker ceo for apac i'm actually going in as wave maker as group m and as a wpp representative because when they share their business problems with me i have the entire uh, arsenal sitting internally in our uh, house and i can take out whatever i require to help solve that problem right so i think wearing that enterprise hat is very crucial because clients are coming to us and asking us to help them solve their crucial business problem uh, and they're asking us to integrate our solution across the different parts of the business that they engage with within wpp so that's the first task i think the second ask uh, which is even more crucial uh, is how do we help them drive growth for their businesses and uh, media is being recognized across our client roster as a very strategic and key growth driver and i think uh, this is something as they are recognizing and realizing it the expectation and ask from us and our team is to step up and be more strategic business partners on the table with them you mentioned strategic business partners but you know at the end of the day there is a pressure to get the maximum reach for every buck spent in this process does innovation and creativity get diluted when the focus a lot of the focus today is on roi and amplified reach on a tighter budget and shrinking margins i think uh, actually creativity becomes even more crucial mm-hmm. you know because efficiency you can uh, derive by optimizing a uh, platform you're in, you know driving the best negotiation but creative spark is what really differentiates a brand and uh, builds that connection with the consumer i think the the opportunity that i'm seeing in the marketplace right now and in the ecosystem is how do we ensure that we are able to light that creative spark consistently across all the platforms in which a brand is active right so uh, are we doing that same level of excellence that we deliver on television on a meta on a tiktok on an insta and i think that is something which is uh, the big unlock uh, which is going to help uh, drive conversion uh, of the business because consumers are the same it's just that they're engaging with the brands and the content from the brands across different kinds of touch points and platforms right so we need to be in, uh, ensuring that we are landing that creative spark and excellence consistently across all those touch points now just coming to the market sentiment that you're seeing in the apac region particularly in india yes what would you say about that i think uh, the overall sentiment in the market is very positive and very strong there is a uh, there is a beautiful uh, energy that i observe whenever i uh, get into the market uh, India is growing as a as a nation right and any one that i connect with and i spend time with i can feel that sense of positive optimism hope and people are very very clear about the fact that they are in a very uh, growth uh, driven environment and i think that energy is such a contagious energy so when i uh, spend the uh, time in the market that is something which really strikes me uh, as a phenomenon right now happening in india i think it's that sentiment you can also see in markets in southeast asia like indonesia has a similar sentiment philippines has a similar sentiment uh, china is seeing a little bit of a slowdown uh, post covid and uh, they are slowly recovering from it but there is a lot more cautiousness in the consumer sentiment there but india is a, a, is a i would say in a little a far more different place in a positive way. There's been some really good work done by Wavemaker India for Mondelez which they continue to do so bisleri also now and also confirm ticket. So just a word on the India team and what are your expectations from the team looking ahead? I think we have a rockstar team in India. 
right? Ajay is a phenomenal leader and he has built a very strong leadership team as well as the entire agency team. Because I've spent time very closely now with his, his ex-co and uh, some of the client teams as well. And what really hits me is the level of care and attention as well as uh, warmth and you know empathy that he has as a leader in driving what he needs to drive he is able to uh, motivate his entire team to deliver way above and beyond uh, you know what uh, the expectation is and what they can and i think between him and shekhar uh, sai vijay deepa upali i mean there are so many people mac and uh, his entire team is a very very strong team and i think the that is something which has become a key differentiator in the market. Uh, it's being recognized by the clients. They can see it in the work that they are doing. It is not, you know, I mean, they're doing good work, not just across one client, but across a roster of clients, right? So that is a testament to the consistency of the application of thought leadership that they are bringing to the table. And I, I just feel immensely proud of the team. Uh, I also obviously have a special connection because uh, I worked very closely with the Wavemaker India team while I was at Mondelez and uh, they are and they they were and they are seen as one of the best teams working for Mondelez globally as well so any work that you've seen across the region that you're really proud of or you know yeah so I think uh, uh, there are Capabilities that we are developing uh, as Wavemaker and Group M uh, across different parts of the region, and you can see that uh, come through in uh, you know in very different ways in terms of value uh, for our clients and driving helping them drive growth for our clients. So, India obviously you you are. Uh, you have visibility to all the work, right? Uh, but we have uh, de developed some really strong capabilities when it comes to social commerce, uh, live commerce, uh, content. Uh, management, content creation and management in the Southeast Asia markets in China uh, because these are very hot industries there and obviously it is something uh, which is helping our clients in those markets as well. We have a very strong strategic team sitting in China which is driving immense level of thought leadership on certain categories which are very crucial categories in that marketplace. Luxury is something which is a very big uh, uh, space for China overall as a market, right? So we have some very strong learnings there. So I think overall, one of the big focus areas for me as I uh, start, what I would say, you know, I mean, the first last eight months have been more about getting to understand our teams and markets and our clients and our business overall. But my future focus areas are going to be how do I ensure that all the good things which are happening in pockets of the region, I'm able to really leverage that to create a scale impact across the entire region. Uh, my final question now that you're you know, at a global role, uh, how do you see the creativity uh, from India? Where does India stand, say, when compared to other markets? I think uh, India overall, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think uh, when it comes to some really strong purpose-driven work, some really strong storytelling work. I think India uh, is, a, is a very, very strong market. Uh, I also think that India has taken a lead uh, and would be, you know, um, amongst the, the top few markets when it comes to linking creativity with technology and with media and creating that streamless solution. Right. So uh, that is something which uh, uh, I also see as one of the big upsides and uh, big developments in the India market in terms of what the advertising the ecosystem is uh, building. Thank you so much, Sinjuja, for your time and hope you have a great stay at Khan this year. Wish you the same and thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you.